Good morning, you guys, and welcome back to sunny Florida. A couple nights ago, I finally got around to answering my Instagram Q&A questions. I did one of those little question boxes, ask me anything. One of the questions was about weight loss, and while I did not lose a tremendous amount of weight, I did lose 30 to 40 pounds that were just stuck. Now I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I got that weight off relatively quickly and what I do to effortlessly keep my shape. So how good does this look? This one I call a green smoothie, but it's actually like my black magic smoothie. It's so loaded with antioxidants and all the good stuff. Yummy. You think you want some? Oh. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think, Bibby? Is it good? So good. Good and blue because it matches our blue eyes. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us what your favorite food is. My favorite food is ice cream. Ice cream? What kind? The store bought kind or the kind that mommy makes in the blender? Store bought. Oh, I knew it. All right, so I'm going to really quick share with you guys how I initially lost the weight and what I have done to effortlessly keep my shape slash stay fit, especially during that pregnancy and postpartum period that I know a lot of us struggle with, especially postpartum. I've heard from dozens, countless of you who have said, I just cannot get rid of that last stubborn few pounds. So I'm gonna share what worked for me and what I have been able to stick with. So first and foremost, when I say effortless, that's kind of not entirely being radically honest because I have been practicing a lot of these healthy habits and routines and rhythms of life over the past decade. So they're set in stone now, so it, it, there is a degree of effortlessness to it now, but getting started when I was basically at a complete standstill and developing that momentum took time, but now it feels very effortless. I'm not depriving myself of calories because I'm on this whole food plant-based diet, which I am truly, truly a firm believer in. If you are not on a whole food plant-based diet, that is the first place I would start because you no longer have to worry about counting calories. While I do think it's important to be calorie conscious and calorie aware, you don't have to obsess meticulously because if you're eating a high volume of low caloric density foods. Honestly, you can eat until you feel full and satiated because your stomach wants to feel full. So in order to do that, you need to be eating high carb, low fat. And that has by and large been the biggest success for me because I don't anymore have to focus on staying under 1500 calories like I used to, just insane. So I came up with 15 questions that I want you to ask yourself. Tally up your yeses versus your noes. Hopefully you will have more yeses than noes. Then you can focus on those no areas. These no areas that you focus on are where you're going to see that weight loss. These are things that I didn't initially think of. Once I was aware and tuned in to how these play into weight management, it was a game changer. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my phone. Sleep, number one. So if you're not getting adequate sleep, then you're going to have issues with ghrelin and leptin, which are the hunger hormones. So if you're not getting sleep, that essentially means you're going to fall victim to constantly feeling like you're not satiated. And I can definitely vouch for this even today, more so back in college when I was very sleep deprived. But now if I have a bad night's sleep, I'm definitely hungrier throughout the day, constantly snacking and 
also falling victim to some of the temptations I wouldn't otherwise. Second question I want you to ask yourself, am I hydrated? So a lot of times dehydration is actually masquerading as hunger. So I carry around my trusty water bottle with me everywhere I go. I recommend you do the same. I always hated drinking water. I don't know why. It's just, I always felt like I needed tea or something flavored and it usually ends up being sugary. By the way, caffeine and coffee and tea definitely dehydrates you, so that doesn't count. What I'm saying is stay hydrated with filtered water. So carry around a water bottle. It makes a huge difference. If you're feeling a hunger pang or if you're craving something, typically a craving only lasts seven minutes and that was a game changer for me when I heard that. So set a timer hydrate instead and within seven minutes see if that craving fades if you just needed hydration that brings me to the next question to ask yourself am i eating when i'm hungry i'm not a huge fan of intermittent fasting especially for women of childbearing age it can really wreak havoc on your metabolism so when you decide to wake up and not eat and drink your coffee instead that's one hit for dehydration. Caffeine is also squelching your appetite, which could be a good thing, but not really when you're already running on E. You would never leave home with a fuel tank on E, coasting on fumes, expecting to get to where you're going in an efficient time manner. So I think it's really important to fuel up. I'm always hungry in the morning, so I like morning workouts, but I never go into a workout under fueled. I always make sure to eat when I'm hungry. I prefer to graze throughout the day, and it keeps me feeling constantly clear and alert and fueled with clean fuel. I definitely think that there is something also to be said though for eating early enough dinners so you give yourself two to three hours of a window before going to bed. If you need a light snack, that's totally fine. I choose either like some frozen cherries or an apple, applesauce, something really simple and straightforward that's just enough to get me to bed to sleep soundly and then I focus on a really healthy full breakfast the next day. So really just focusing on not doing too much intermittent fasting. A lot of times that window of eating is too small to get adequate nutrients into your body if you're intermittent fasting. So it's much easier to get it in. If you're having a smoothie, having some fruit, having a salad, having a cooked meal, it's much easier to get the nutrients that your cells need in order to thrive. I definitely remember like going out in college and I would always be like, oh, well, I'm gonna drink tonight, so I'm not gonna eat a heavy dinner because that's just gonna be too many calories. And it's like, that's just crazy thinking. That's undernourished, overfed, which is how a lot of us are living with fast foods and processed foods. Coming to the next point, Am I eating whole foods, yes or no? So if you're eating too many processed packaged foods, that can really stick and I can vouch for that. Going back to when I was in college trying to lose the weight, I did lose the weight, but I was eating 1500 calories a day and they were not healthy, wholesome, whole food calories. They were fiber one cereal, fiber one bars, fiber one yogurt, lean cuisines. And all of these things had too many ingredients that I couldn't parse out. And if you can't read it, don't eat it generally speaking, because if you can't read it on the label, you don't know what this weird ingredient is, whether it's a skincare product or a food product, your body can't read it either. Your cells literally don't know what to do with it. So what do they do? Either it gets expelled or more commonly, it's getting packed away, socked away. Your body doesn't know how to even excrete a lot of these issues. You're constantly adding to your toxic load in your body, which means your liver isn't functioning properly. Things begin to really stagnate and slow down and things stick. Not all processed foods are bad. So if you look at oats, for example, you have oat groats, which are the wholest form, then steel cut, then rolled, and then finally you have ground up oat flour. These are all great processed foods. There are things like healthy whole food lentil pasta or chickpea pasta. It's processed, but it's so healthy and nourishing. What I'm talking about are like even some of the bars that we're taking with us to the gym. I would really encourage you to look at a different snack item because most of these bars, again, have unreadable ingredients. If not, they have way too much refined sugar added to them and it's just not worth it when you could be eating something more nourishing like a healthy smoothie before or after the gym. Next question, am I pooping? This was my one of my biggest problems in college. So I was not going regularly. So that's why I was obsessed with the fiber one processed things because I was always looking for grams of fiber on the packages because I wanted to make sure I was getting as much fiber as possible so I could go number two. And I just wasn't regular when in fact, 
All I needed to do was, looking back at the last question, switch to whole foods. Am I eating whole foods? No, I was not. So when I switched to whole foods plant-based, I was able to eat way more calories. I didn't need to focus on fiber whatsoever. I didn't need to focus on calorie counting meticulously. I was eating almost double the amount. So from 1,500 calories to upwards of 3,000 calories now, and I'm getting full. My stomach is physically full, but I'm also feeling like my cells are nourished. So it's a double whammy and I am pooping regularly. If you're not pooping regularly, your waistline is always gonna look like you've got a baby. You're gonna feel bloated. I've done a video on bloating. I'll be sure to link the bloating video below because I know a lot of you, even who are switching to plant-based, have issues with beans or grain or gluten. So check out that bloating video. Am I supplementing? So first and foremost, get your blood work done. I highly recommend Complement. So this is a totally plant-based company. They're very, very honest and transparent. Their products are of the utmost pristine quality. They have a program called Insight where you can basically prick your finger from the comfort of your own home, drip it on these little cards and seal it, send it off, and literally within a couple days, you'll get the results on your Complement app. So they test micronutrients, biomarkers, A1C, and omega-3 levels. So Getting all of that done can be a great baseline. And then from there, I also recommend checking out the Complement Essential Vitamin, which is going to have all of the essential vegan nutrients that you might want to focus on more and make sure you're getting your bases covered there. So the two that stand out to me the most are selenium and iodine. So yes, I drop Brazil nuts in my smoothies, but it's also kind of great to just have the right amount all in one place in the complement essential capsules. Sometimes we can get too much of nutrients from the multivitamins that we take. So I really like complement because it's just to complement your diet, not to replace things. And you're not getting too much because you can get too much of a good thing. But selenium and iodine are of the utmost importance because they directly impact your thyroid health. And if your thyroid is under functioning or it's not functioning properly, that in turn will affect your metabolism. It will slow things down, can cause issues again with sticky weight. I definitely noticed a difference when I began honing in on micronutrients. Logging into Chronometer can also be a very helpful tool. So I was recognizing, wow, I'm getting plenty of this. I don't need to focus so much on protein like everybody thinks. What I need to be focusing on are A, B, and C. So that might be different for you. It could be your B vitamins. Maybe you need nutritional yeast. But again, going back to Complement, cruise their, through their site, consider getting blood work done. Highly recommend it. You can also use Eat, Move, Rest. 15 for a discount, it'll give you 15% off. You can use that repeatedly, it's amazing. Next, am I moving daily? I am committed to working out six days a week. It feels effortless to me because I enjoy the type of movement that I'm doing and I'm seeing results. At this point to me, I don't look at exercise as like the kicker for weight loss. It definitely mostly stemmed from how I was eating, but movement will boost your metabolism. That's kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it means that your system is revved up. You're gonna be burning more calories throughout the day now that your metabolism is boosted. Also can mean that you're going to be more hungry. So you just have to be mindful, again, going back to like not starving yourself before a workout because you don't wanna be ravenous afterwards. So make sure you're fueling properly. At first, I really overestimated how many calories I was burning during a workout. Judging by my Apple Watch, I only burn a couple hundred calories in a 45 minute pretty intense workout. So just realize that just because you worked out doesn't mean you always treat yourself extra with more or with the indulgent food. Next question, am I living a low stress lifestyle? So what stress does is it elevates cortisol and what cortisol likes to do is cause fat to stick, especially in the abdomen. So I know this is usually the kicker. For me personally, it was. This was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to lose weight or get in shape. I mean, I have these long arms and long legs and I was always fairly lean in those areas, but I realized it was beginning to look funny because I was just blowing up in the middle section with bloating, but also excess weight gain in that area. So I know that can be the case if you're experiencing too much stress. So practicing mindfulness, meditation, all of these things can help tremendously. Finding ways to reduce stress. Do I need to be working 60 hours a week when my kids are at home and I'm missing out on their lives and I could be living less stress, maybe making less money, but if I'm happier, it's worth it. So I'm gonna rattle off these last ones kind of quickly. 
does my clothing fit properly? So I have a lot of clothing that just doesn't fit me anymore. And that can make you feel bad and instantly make you feel like you need to lose weight, even if it's totally false, or it can make you feel like you need to lose more than you actually do. So snip the tags off if that number on there is bothering you. I say out with the old and with the new. So donate the old, buy something new, snip the tag off if that new number bothers you. But also recognize that every clothing company runs differently. So you might be a small in one brand, but if you're forcing yourself into something small in another brand and it's not fitting, that doesn't mean you need to lose weight. Just wear clothing that fits you and complements you and it'll instantly give you the appearance, both in the mirror and to other people, that you are fit. On that note, another thing that can dramatically improve your self-image and your image to others is your posture. So I can sit here and I can slouch but really, honestly, we should be treating our core like my trainer told me, and I'll never forget, this is a canister. So you don't want your ribs to be splayed open. You want them to be knitted. The whole area right here, like this box or this rectangle should be a canister. So always being cognizant and mindful, especially when you're working out and for digestion too, because if you're wearing tight fitting clothes and you're hunched over, think about your intestines. They're already so scrunched and crowded. Things are just not gonna be moving. Next question, am I in a good mood? Honestly, there is a strong correlation and connection between the gut and the brain. You've probably all heard the phrase, the gut brain connection. So if your gut is in an unhealthy state, it's going to cause your mood to be in an unhealthy state. So if you feel like on most days you're moody and grumpy, it could be that there's an imbalance in your gut. This was huge for me because I was definitely not going regularly, like I said. And when I got on a probiotic supplement and began feeding myself prebiotics via plant fiber, then I saw a dramatic shift. Complement has a great prebiotic powder as well. This is going to help feed your probiotic gut flora. It's gonna get things moving ultimately improving your brain. So moving from inward to outward, now we're gonna look at personal care and cleaning products, things in your household that might be major red flags that you're not aware of. So we've gone and stayed at Airbnbs and they have an air freshener plugged in or the cleaning lady sprayed with a bunch of Lysol and cleaning products and my eyes get red and watery, my nose runs, my head gets foggy and cloudy and stuffy. Sometimes it even pounds and throbs and pulses and it just makes me feel not my best. My voice gets raspy. I'm very chemically sensitive in that way. Really, truly, these are all endocrine disruptors. Fragrances, natural flavors, these trade secrets, these disrupt hormones. They can cause irregular periods. They can cause infertility, low sperm counts, all of these crazy things, and weight gain. They cause weight to stick because again, you're getting a lot of these chemicals that your body doesn't know how to process or read. So the more we can get cleaner with our products and more mineral, minimal with our products from makeup to cleaning, the better off. You can find on our page, our product faves. There's tons of discount codes in there. We've got favorites like Branch Basics that we just did in our Clean With Us video. We love their cleaning product. Next question, am I calorie conscious? So going back to not being calorie obsessed, but being aware, being conscious, use chronometer to plug in and no, maybe you're overestimating how many calories are in an apple, maybe you're underestimating how many calories are in the nut butter you're consuming. So make sure that you know so that when you're eating throughout the day, you're aware, oh my gosh, I'm putting, I put avocado on my salad and I put a fancy dressing on. That is a lot of fat, which equals a lot of calories. So if you can be more conscious of what you're consuming and what's in it, this will help tremendously. Again, going back to eating whole foods plant-based, for me, the biggest kicker was going beyond that and recognizing the macronutrient ratios in the foods I was eating, so carbs, fats, and proteins, making sure that I was eating a high volume of high carb foods and not worrying so much about the fats and proteins. Last two questions, am I giving it my best? Ask yourself and get radically honest. I keep saying that, but I just love that phrase. Be radically honest with yourself, with me, with a friend. Are you honestly giving it your all? Could you be doing a little bit better with regular exercise at an intensity that's making a difference? Could you actually be eating a little bit healthier and not sneaking into the kid's snack drawer so much? Could you be sleeping better? Maybe putting the phone in a different room so you're not falling asleep with that being the last thing you looked at for an hour extra before bed. 
So getting really honest, are you truly doing your best? What area can you improve on? That helped me so much because we tend to lie to ourselves. We like to hear good things about our bad habits. So a lot of times we just put our blinders on, keep doing our things. We find like, oh, coffee is actually good for me for this very teeny tiny reason. When in reality, it's maybe doing more harm than good. It's creating an addiction. It's dehydrating you. It's leaching nutrients. It's causing you to not sleep at night. So rather than lying to yourself, just truly do your best. Get honest and do your very darn best. I had to do that so many times and I continue to have to do that. Last but not least, could I practice a bit more self-acceptance and self-love? So maybe you're not exactly where you want to be, but Self-love can really make a huge difference because number one, it's gonna lower your stress levels, but number two, it's gonna make the process more enjoyable. And the other part to this is self-acceptance. So there are certain things we just can't change about our bodies. So I have some excess loose skin in my abdomen because I lost weight during college. So I can't necessarily change that. So maybe weight loss isn't the solution. Maybe self-love and self-acceptance is just a better route. Love yourself where you're currently at because just remember, yes, I'm in my mid thirties, but someday I'm gonna be in my mid forties and wish I was in my mid thirties. Someday I'm gonna be 50 and wish I was 40 and so on and so forth. And you're gonna say, man, I wish I just would have taken more time to just love the body I was in then. So really think about that and let that sink in because a lot of times I'm just like, I can't wait to be here or I'll be happy when, when in reality I need to recognize Number one, look at how far I've already come. Just be here now and be happy and do your best to be healthy and no matter what, don't starve yourself. I've been there to the point where I was depriving myself and I just felt like I constantly needed to detoxify my body and all that it truly did was deplete me. So if you're trying to detox and deprive, you'll end up depleted, triple D and then you're gonna end up feeling down in the dumps and depressed. I'll continue on with the D's if you want me to, but I think you get the point. So, I hope that helps you guys. I tried to intertwine and weave in a little bit of my own narrative, my own anecdote, but I also tried to present you with real facts and real research and things that can help you because it shouldn't be a daily battle, a constant struggle. Remember, it's gonna start with what's on your plate, but also, like I said, make sure you're also hydrated, getting enough sleep. Focus on whole food, plant-based, high carb, low fat. Don't worry about protein. You're gonna be getting fiber, you're gonna poop better, and ultimately it's gonna make you happier and less stressed, and it all works together. That's the most important thing with weight loss. You don't wanna go for that fad diet or that detox or that extreme thing or that pill. You have to do it all. It's very holistic, everything works together. I hope this helped you guys. Give it a thumbs up. Leave me some love in the comments below and be sure to check out Compliment, like I said. Making sure that you're getting well nourished, getting the nutrients that your body needs is of utmost importance, regardless of where you're at with your weight loss or your body journey. Until next time, eat, move, rest your best. Don't forget to pop into Instagram, send me some DMs, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. There are three things we all do every day, and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.